So it is officially that time. It is time for an updated best Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go in 2023. As the meta changes over the year, I like to update this video and give you guys the full breakdown of where you should be investing your Stardust. In this video, we're gonna break down all 18 types in Pokemon Go and what are gonna be the best Pokemon to power up to use as raid counters for those types. Also, while we talk about each of those types, we're gonna give it a usefulness rating on how useful that type is for actual raids. We're also gonna break down the A tier Pokemon, the best Pokemon for that type, the B tier Pokemon, Pokemon that are good as raid attackers for that type, but not as good. And also, of course, the future tier Pokemon you should keep an eye out for and could potentially take the top spots. So it may not be worth investing into the A tier Pokemon because the future tier in a couple months could take over. We'll also talk a bit about the best Pokemon for PP at the end of the video. So make sure you check the time sets below and scrub through wherever you want in this video because it is gonna be a pretty long one. Without further ado, let's get right into it, starting with the Steel type. As far as how useful Steel type is in Pokemon Go, I would give it a four out of five usefulness rating because Steel type can counter all those fairy raid bosses, which is like one of the only counters for fairies, but also has use against ice type, rock type ray bosses and all that stuff. I don't think it's the most useful type in the game, but definitely a very useful type. Four out of five is the rating I'd give it. In the A tier for the steel type, as always, we're gonna have Shadow Metagross and Metagross with its legacy move, Meteor Mash. This Pokemon is just insanely strong and has been for the longest time and probably always will be the best steel type raid attacker. It's literally one of the highest damage per second Pokemon in the game. In the B tier, we're then gonna have Dialga, Excadrill, Mega Agron, and Mega Caesar. The only updated Pokemon we have from last year to this year is gonna be, of course, Mega Agron and Caesar now available, but unfortunately, they're Megas are just not that strong as Steel type raid attackers. They do decent damage and are the best that you can really get for a Mega, but not the strongest. Finally, taking a look at future potential Steel type Pokemon, we're gonna have Mega Metagross, Mega Lucario, Zashin in the Crown Sword form, Shadow Excadrill, and Stataka Taka, the Ultra Beast, which was actually teased recently and could potentially come to the game soon. Definitely keep an eye out for those Pokemon, prep their candies, get a good IV, Lucario, for example, because they are definitely gonna take some of the top spots for Steel type raid attackers, of course, if they get the right moveset. Then moves on to the next type, which is gonna be the Bug type. In terms of usefulness for the bug type, I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Normally I'd give it a two out of five, but because we have Hoopa Unbound in the elite raid bosses and a couple new raid bosses popping up that are weak to bug, I think it is gaining a little bit of traction in terms of usefulness. So I think it's a three out of five. Definitely worth having a couple bug type counters, but not sincerely a whole team. In the A tier for the bug type, we're gonna have Pheromosa, Shadow Caesar, Mega Beedrill, and Mega Caesar. Pheromosa, although a pretty squishy Pokemon, it does insane damage and all those Pokemon there do really good damage for the bug type. In the B tier for the bug type Pokemon, we're gonna have Shadow Pinsir, Genesect, and Vi Volt. I think that's how you say it. Honestly, I don't really recommend investing in this Pokemon since Bug is not the most useful type, so you're better off really building the best possible team for it, but those are gonna be the B tier slot. Finally, in the future, we could see Mega Heracross, Mega Pinsir, and Volcarona all taking spots in the Bug type category, so definitely keep an eye out for those Pokemon and prep their candies. That moves us on into the Dark Typing. Dark Typing, I'm going to give a four out of five in terms of usefulness. Reason being, Dark Types do well against Psychic and Ghost type Pokemon, but they also have the added benefit of actually resisting Psychic and Dark type moves, unlike another Another type we're going to talk about. It doesn't have the most widespread usefulness, but I do think it is very useful because there's a lot of those types of raid bosses, and also they are very good on the defensive standpoint in raids. In terms of the A tier for dark types, we're going to have Hydreigon with, of course, that new move Brutal Swing, Shadow Weavile, Shadow Tyranitar, Mega Houndoom, and Mega Absol. All these Pokemon are strong dark types, and if you have them powered up, definitely worth using. In terms of the B tier, we're going to go ahead and have Darkrai, Yvelta, Shadow Honchkrow, and Mega Gyarados. All these Pokemon are good, just not really as good as the other dark type raid attackers and are more of a budget or second option. Finally, for future Pokemon, you can look out for dark types. Of course, we're gonna have Mega Tyranitar. We'll have Shadow Hydreigon, which is gonna take the number one slot forever for dark types if that comes. Dark Void Legacy move on Darkrai could help that bring it up to the A tier slot. And finally, Ash Greninja. Now, personally, I'm not a huge believer in Ash Greninja coming to Pokemon Go because it has a very interesting thing in the anime, which it doesn't really evolve into Ash Greninja and it's very exclusive to the trainer Ash. So I don't know if they just give it to everybody, but if it does come, it could have some potential dark type usage. That moves us on to the next type, which is gonna be one of the most popular, Dragon Types. Dragon Types, I'm gonna go ahead and give a three out of five usefulness rating. Although there is a lot of Dragon Type raid bosses, the only thing dragons are good against is of course, other dragons. And when they are taking down other dragons, the problem with that is that they take super effective damage from dragons. So you end up using a lot of potions. Yes, they are very useful in taking down those popular raid bosses like Mega Latios, Mega Latias. But again, in terms of usefulness across the board, there's not much. In terms of the A tier though, for the Dragon Types, we're gonna have Shadow Dragonite, Shadow Salamance, Mega Latios and Mega Salamence. The best one, of course, there being Shadow Salamence. That is just an absolutely insanely strong Pokemon. It actually has a higher DPS than the Mega. So definitely invest in those Shadow Salamences if you can. In terms of B tier, we're gonna have Mega Latias, Rayquaza, Palkia, Garchomp, Salamence, and Zekrom. Honestly, any sort of dragon legendary Pokemon that has a high attack or pseudo legendary dragon that has a good moveset is gonna be a good dragon type ray attackers. The thing about dragon types is just so many good ones. So you really can't go wrong. Finally, for future dragon types you could look forward to, we'll have Shadow Garchomp, Mega Rayquaza, Mega Garchomp, 
Garchomp, Black and White Kyrem, Basial Rend on Palkia or its origin form, and Roar of Time on Dialga or its origin form. All those Pokemon in the future could potentially take the top spots as Dragon type raid attackers, and I'm excited to see them come to the game. Let's move this on to the Electric type. I'm gonna go ahead and give Electric type a four out of five usefulness rating. Why? Because there's a lot of flying type raid bosses, even dragon flying type Pokemon like Rayquaza, which you're actually better off using ice, but you got Moltres, you got, you know, the birds. Electric can also be used against some water type raid bosses, which I believe it's like one of the only types you can really use against those. So definitely gonna have some use there. In the A tier for the Electric type, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in Zerkatry, Shadow Raikou, Shadow Electivire, Shadow Zapdos, Shadow Magnezone, Mega Manectric, and Zekrom with Fusion Bolt. Specifically there's Zerkatry, which is a new release from this past year, is going to be the number one best Electric type raid attacker in the game. And I don't really see it ever getting topped. Maybe like a Shadow Zachrom will be better, but Zerkatry is definitely gonna be a Pokemon when it comes back to raids, you're definitely gonna wanna have and power up. That's the go-to, but all of those are really strong. Electric's got a good roster. In terms of the B tier for Electric types, we're gonna see Shadow Ampharos, Thunderous Therian, Shadow Luxray, Electivire, Raikou, Magnezone, and Zapdos. More budget Pokemon in there, but again, they're still gonna do a lot of damage. Electric is just a very good raid attacking type. They've just been given a lot of good moves and have good DPS, so definitely any of those will be strong. Finally, for future Pokemon to look out for, Zera Aura, and finally, Finally, Bolt Strike Zekrom, which is another legacy move that Zekrom could potentially learn that will make it potentially even better than it is with Fusion Bolt right now. That moves on to the Fairy type. Fairy type for the usefulness rating, we're gonna go ahead and give it a four out of five. Reason being is it actually does pretty good against multiple types, that being Dark, Dragon, and Fighting type. Also, the good thing about Fairy type is it resists moves from those types, so it's very good in terms of defense and having a very high TDO, putting out a lot of damage without having to use a lot of potions. Although we don't have the strongest raid Pokemon in the Fairy type, it's still a useful type. In the here for the fairy types, we're gonna have Shadow Gardevoir and we're gonna have Mega Gardevoir. Mega Gardevoir, of course, being a new Mega, it's gonna be a very strong one, and Shadow Gardevoir being available for a long time, but it's a, it's a strong Pokemon. In the B tier, we're gonna have Shadow Granbull, Togekiss, Zacian, Regular Gardevoir, and Primarina. All these Pokemon are strong, of course, not as good as that Shadow Gardevoir you really want to grind, but it's very strong. Finally, for future forms, future Pokemon that could come to the game, we're gonna have Zacian in the Crown Sword form, Shadow Primarina, Enamorous, Geomancy on Xerneas, and finally Hatternet. I don't really know how to say that one. All these Pokemon, if they come to the game with the correct move sets, definitely could be very strong. With Shadow Prime Marina, I believe being one of the best fairy types potentially when we get that. That moves on to the fighting type, which is actually a type that got a huge shakeup this year. I'm gonna go ahead and give fighting type a five out of five in terms of usefulness. There is a lot of rock type raid bosses, a lot of steel type raid bosses, a lot of dark type raid bosses that you're gonna wanna go ahead and use fighting types on. All around, I find myself using fighting types very often. In terms of the A tier for fighting types, of course, we have the new big dog, Terrakion, which is gonna be the number one fighting type with that legacy move, Sacred Sword. Definitely power those things up. It is just insane the amount of damage that thing could put out and its stats and its bulk. We also, of course, still have Shadow Machamp, which is still a very strong fighting type raid Attacker, and as well as Mega Blaziken, which is a new fighting type from this year. In the B tier, we're gonna have Shadow Hariyama, Lucario, Machamp, Conkeldur, Megalopony, and of course the new Keldeo. Keldeo is actually very, very strong, but again, you can only get one of them, that's why it's in the B tier. Finally, in the future tier, Pokemon to look out for Mega Lucario, Shadow Conkeldur, Mega Heracross, Rapid and Single Strike Urshifu, and finally Mar Shadow. All these Pokemon, if they come to the game, it could definitely be the top, but I don't really see anything taking over Trachyon, it's just that strong. That moves on to the fire type, which also got a little bit of a shakeup this year. Fire types, I think are pretty useful. I'll give them a three out of five. You know, you have some grass type raid bosses, some ice types you're gonna wanna use, but I find when, you know, you wanna use a fire type raid boss, there's definitely a type that just has better Pokemon you can use. The nice thing about fire types though, is it's very often sunny in game. So you find fire types getting a lot of weather boost, which is really nice for raids. In terms of the A tier for the fire types, we're gonna have Mega Charizard Y, the new Mega Blaziken, Shadow Entei, Shadow Moltres, Shadow Apex Ho, and Reshiram with Fusion Flare. A lot of shadows, a lot of legendaries, very expensive for the fire type A tier, but very strong. In the B tier, we're gonna have Shadow Charizard, regular Apex ho Shadow Typhlosion, Mega Charizard X, and Mega Houndoom. All strong fire types you can go ahead and power up and get. Finally, in the future tier for fire types to look out for, we're gonna have Shadow Blaziken, which will be the best fire type ray attacker, I believe, non-Mega in the game. So definitely get some good Torchic XL candies. We'll have Shadow Embor, Shadow Darmanitan, which will also be very, very strong, and I believe it'll compete with Shadow Blaziken. Blacephalon, and finally, Blue Flare on Reshiram, which is another potential signature move Reshiram could get, which will be pretty strong. That moves on into the flying type. For flying type, I'm gonna give it like a two out of five usefulness rating. I find flying type, there's only like a couple Pokemon that you can really use flying types, things like Virizion, and I guess like some grass legendaries, but there's really not a lot. I think as we get more raid bosses in the game, flying will get more useful, but at the moment, there's only really a couple Pokemon where flying is gonna be the premier choice. In terms of the A tier for flying types though, we're gonna have Shadow Moltres, regular Moltres, by the way, Sky Attack Legacy on those Pokemon, Mega Pidgeot, Shadow Ho with Hidden Power Flying, so that one's pretty tough to get, Shadow Staraptor, 
with Gust and Shadow Honchkrow. All strong flying types. In the B tier, we're gonna have regular Ho with Hidden Power Flying, Rayquaza, and Evelta. Finally, in the future tier, we'll see Mega Rayquaza as well as Dragon Ascend on Rayquaza. Again, flying type, not the most useful type, but those are the Pokemon you're gonna wanna power up. By the way, you can also power up like Shadow Moltres, use as a flying and a fire type Ray Boss since it's good in both types. And we're gonna get into that in a bit. Now let's move on to the Ghost type. Ghost type, I think it's gonna go ahead and have a three out of five usefulness rating. Ghost does a lot of good neutral damage and it's a very good offensive move in competitive battling. But in terms of raids, it's not always the best choice. Reason being is any type that Ghost does well against, it usually takes neutral or super effective. For example, it does well against Psychic types, but Psychic types hit it back for neutral. It does well against Ghost types itself, but again, Ghost types hit it back for super effective. Nonetheless though, in the A tier for Ghost types, we're gonna of course have Mega Gengar, the new Mega Banet, Chandler, and finally Shadow Mewtwo with Shadow Ball. For the B tier, we're gonna have Garatina Origin form with Shadow Force, which doesn't have a very high DPS, that's why it's in the B tier, but it is still very strong. Gengar, Hoopa in both forms, and finally Mewtwo with Shadow Ball. Finally, for future potential Pokemon for the Ghost types, we'll have Shadow Chandler, Shadow Gengar, Dragapult, Marshadow, Blacephalon, Holtegeist, and Delmize. All these Pokemon, if they come to the game, could be some of the top Ghost type raid attackers, but it's gonna be pretty hard to knock out like Chandler of that top spot. That moves on to the Grass type, which is a type that got a complete shakeup this year, and we got a lot of strong Pokemon. I don't think Grass is very useful for raids. Unfortunately, you can use it against what, like ground and like water type raid bosses, which there's not that many. It does get some use taking down like those new primals we got if those return. In the Grass type though, the A tier is now gonna be Mega Sceptile, which is gonna be like the best Grass type raid attacker, as well as Kartana, which can be the best non-Mega Grass type raid attacker. Kartana is just insane. It's the amounts of DPS it has, and is such a good raid attacker in the game. In the B tier, we're gonna now have Mega Venusaur, Shadow Venusaur, Shadow Torterra, Shadow Tangrowth, Shadow Victory Bell, Shadow Executor, and Zarud. Again, all these grass types are just not gonna be because of the A tier, so if you can power up Kartanas, go with that. But if you have them powered up, they're not bad. Finally, future grass type Pokemon we could look at is gonna be Shadow Sceptile, Shadow Chestnut, and Rillaboom. That moves on into the ground type. Ground type, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four out of five for usefulness rating. Reason being is electric type raid bosses, the only way to hit them for super effective damage is gonna be with ground type. So that's definitely gonna bring up their usefulness rating because they have a very unique specialized use in which no other type can really do. Now ground actually got a huge buff last year with a bunch of new ground type Pokemon making its way into the A tier. Starting with Primal Groudon with Precipice Blade, which of course is gonna be the new number one ground type raid attacker in the game, super strong. Then also Shadow Mamoswine and Mamoswine got access to high horsepower, making it the best ground type raid attacker that's not a mega. Finally, Groudon got Precipice Blades, which helped it out tremendously in terms of ground type raid attacker. Although not good as Shadow Mamoswine, it is still deserving of the A tier in a very strong ground type. In the B tier, we're gonna have Landers Therian, Landers Incarnate, Garchomp, Rhyperior, Exodrill, Shadow Swampert, and Mega Swampert. All these ground types are gonna be strong, but of course not as strong as the A tier. Note, by the way, Garchomp kinda has very good use because it actually is three times resistance to electric type, which makes it very, very good for electric type raid bosses and which it just has an insanely high TDO. Finally, future ground type Pokemon to look out for is gonna be Shadow Excadrill, Shadow Garchomp, Mega Garchomp, and Shadow Rhyperior. We're coming down to the end of it with the Ice type. Ice type is gonna go ahead and have a four out of five usefulness rating in my opinion. Reason being is there's a couple Pokemon actually double weak to ice. Things like Landers, things like Rayquaza get a lot of use out of your ice type Pokemon, and these are very popular raid bosses everybody wants to raid. In terms of A tier for ice types, the only one's gonna be Shadow Mamoswine. This has been known as the best ice type raid attacker. And again, Shadow Mamoswine, good as a ground type as well. You'll notice Shadow Mamoswine is a very good raid Pokemon to power up all around. In the B tier, we're gonna have Galarian Darmanitan, Shadow Weavile, Regular Mamoswine, Mega Glalie, and Mega Obama Snow. All good Ice type Ray attackers, but of course, just not as strong as the A tier. Finally, future Pokemon, of course, is gonna be Zen Mode Galarian Darmanitan, which will take the number one slot as Ice type Ray attackers if we ever get that Zen Mode. And finally, Black and White Kyrim could make an appearance. Then moving on to the normal type, of course, normal can't do super effective damage, so we can just move on from the normal type because it's not gonna find any use in raids. But that brings us on to the Poison type. Now, Poison, I'm gonna give it a two out of five for usefulness rating. Reason being, the only only time you really ever use poisons is gonna be against fairy type raid attackers. But even then we have steel types that are just super strong. Like Metagross is just always gonna be a better option against a fairy type raid boss than a poison type. Nonetheless though, we do have some decent poison type raid attackers that came to the game last year. Of course, in the A tier, we're gonna have Nyligo and Mega Beedrill as the top ones. In the B tier, we'll have Roserade, Toxicroak, Shadow Victory Bell, Shadow Vileplume and Overquill. And finally, future potential Pokemon will be Eternatus and Nagnadel, which actually was teased recently, so could come to the game soon. That moves us on into the Psychic type. Now Psychic, I'm gonna give it a three out of five for usefulness rating. It's not the most useful type. We do have some very, very strong Pokemon, but you're really only ever using Psychic against like fighting and poison type raid bosses, and there's really not that many. Nonetheless though, A tier of course for Psychic type is gonna be the main man, Shadow Mewtwo, super, super strong. Of course, regular Mewtwo will also be in the A tier because it's really strong, and Mega Alakazam. Mewtwo, by the way, does need Psy Strike to be in this top spot. In the B tier for Psychic types, we're gonna have Mega Latios, Mega Gardevoir, Mega Latias, Shadow Latios, Shadow Latias, Hoopa Unbound, Shadow Metagross, Shadow 
Alakazam, and Lunala. If Shadow Mewtwo and Mewtwo weren't a thing, all these Pokemon would be very, very strong. Because all those Pokemon I just mentioned are very, very strong, but they're going to be put in the B tier because of how strong Shadow Mewtwo is. It just takes the A tier. It's just a huge step up. Finally, for future Pokemon for the Psychic type would be Mega Mewtwo, of course, X and Y, Shadow Rider, Calyrex, Mega Gallade, and Necrozma. Also, the Dusk Mane and the Dawn Wind forms on Necrozma. But I don't really ever see anything taking out Mewtwo. Then we'll just on to the Rock type. Rock type, I'm going to give it a five out of five usefulness ratings. Rock is such a useful type, and I believe I did the calculations once. Out of all the raid bosses in the game, Rock hits the most amount of them for super effective damage. Definitely want to make sure you have a full team of Rock type Pokemon. This is one of the first teams you should build. A tier for Rock types, we're going to, of course, have a Shadow Tyranitar, Rampardos, Rhyperior, and Mega Aerodactyl. For B tier, we'll have Terrakion, Tyranitar, Tyrantrum, Shadow Agron, and Shadow Aerodactyl. Finally, future Pokemon, which are the ones you're really going to look out for because these Pokemon will just be better than our A tier Pokemon Shadow Rampardos, Shadow Rhyperior, Mega Tyranitar, Mega Diancie, and Stataka Taka. Those future Pokemon are definitely the ones you'll want to prep for because Rock type, although very, very strong right now, those future Pokemon will just like one up it and make a whole new class above it. Then we'll on to our final type here, which is going to be the Water type. I'm going to give a Water type a three out of five for usefulness rating. I think it is a pretty useful type to have, but again, not anywhere as useful as the other ones we were giving. In the A tier, though, for Water types, we're going to have of course, Primal Kyogre, the new Primal with Origin Pulse, super strong, the number one water type rate attacker. Everybody thought it was Mega Swampert before. Because Primal Kyogre got Origin Pulse, it is now the number one water type rate attacker. It has an insane DPS, I believe, of like 21. But also, Mega Swampert is still in the A tier, a very good water type rate attacker as well, Shadow Swampert. For the B tier for water types, we're going to have Shadow for Alligator, Origin Pulse on Kyogre, Mega Blastoise, Mega Gyarados, Shadow Gyarados, and Regular Swampert. All very strong Pokemon. Finally, for future Pokemon, we're going to have Ash Greninja, which we already talked about. Again, don't know if it's going to come to the game. Shadow Primarina and Intelli. All those Pokemon could come to the game, make some waves, but honestly, I think the water type meta is not really changing anytime soon. And that is pretty much it. That is all 18 types in Pokemon Go and the best types for all those Pokemon. Now, I do want to note, I think the best Pokemon for each different raid boss is going to change. It's best to use an app like Poke Battler to check out the actual simulations because if you're going up against a steel type raid boss, you're using a fire type, but that steel type raid boss knows a water type move. It might not be the best to use a fire type. The best counters for each different raid boss is going to change depending on the weather boost, depending on the moveset of the raid boss, etc., etc. But this is a good general breakdown of what are be the best types in general and sometimes the Pokemon is just so strong like Shadow Metagross that even if it's taking super effective damage from a raid boss it is still the best counter. Nonetheless though that brings us in to PvP and what are be the best PvP Pokemon. As I'm making this video it is actually only a couple days away from a new PvP season which means the meta is going to get changed and if you don't know every single three months the PvP metas do change since things get buffed and nerfed right so there could be some Pokemon that are strong that are not strong anymore. But I do want to go through a couple of the top strong Strongest Pokemon for the Great League, Ultra League, and Master League. Pokemon that you should be making sure you have. And these Pokemon have generally been good across, you know, the last couple years in PvP and don't really see them going anywhere unless they get an insane nerf. Nonetheless, though, for the Great League, some of the top Pokemon are going to be Registeel with Lock On, Focus Blast, and Zap Cannon, Galarian Stunfist with Mud Shot, Rock Slide, and Earthquake, Medicham with Counter, Ice Punch, and Psychic, Swampert and Shadow Swampert with Mud Shot, Hydro Cannon, and Earthquake, Trevenant with Shadow Claw, Seed Bomb, and Shadow Ball, Bastiodon with Smackdown, Stone Edge, and Flamethrower, Noctowl with Wing Attack, Sky Attack, and Shadow Ball, Helipur with Wing Attack, Weather Ball, and Hurricane, Altario with Dragon Breath, Sky Attack, and Moon Blast, and Sableye with Shadow Claw, Foul Play, and Return. All Strong Great League Pokemon there, and honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with an investment. In the Ultra League, we're gonna see Registeel, Lock On, Focus Blast, and Zap Cannon, Pidgeot, Wing Attack, Feather Dance, Brave Bird, Giratina, Altered Form, Shadow Claw, Dragon Claw, and Shadow Sneak, Trevenant, Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball, Seed Bomb, Cobalion, Double Kick, Sacred Sword, and Stone Edge, Swampert, Mud Shot, Hydro Cannon, Earthquake, Cresselia with Psycho Cut, Grass Knot, and Moon Blast, and finally Charizard with Wing Attack, Blast Burn, and Dragon Claw. Finally, for the Master League Pokemon you could probably have on your team are going to be Groudon with Mud Shot, Precipice Blades, and Fire Punch, Lugia with Dragon Tail, Sky Attack, Arrow Blast, Giratina Altered with Shadow Claw, Dragon Claw, Ancient Power, Solgaleo with Fire Spin, Psychic Fangs, and Iron Head, a good core breaker there, Dragonite with Dragon Breath, Dragon Claw, and Super Power, super strong there, Zacian with Quick Attack, Close Combat, and Play Rough, Mewtwo with Psycho Cut, Psy Strike, and Shadow Ball, and finally, Ivelta with Snarl, Dark Pulse, and Focus Blast. Now, those are some of the top Pokemon that you can use, but the best thing you could do is actually come to pvpoke.com here. On this website, you can go through the Great League, Ultra League, Master League, and any other meta as well, like the Love Cup and Master League league meta and check out all the top Pokemon. You can also click in here and it'll show you all the matchups, the best Pokemon it beats, the best Pokemon it loses to, move sets, things like that. PvP Poke is an amazing website. So if you want a more in-depth guide on what are the best Pokemon to power up, definitely check out PvP Poke. If you also need team ideas, you can come over to train top performers and then choose your league and then scroll down here and it'll give you some of the top teams. So if you're ever wondering what are some top teams, some top Pokemon you should power up and try running in each meta, you can come over to the top performers section and check out the top teams. Guys, 
that is pretty much the video. Those are the best Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go for raids and for PvP. I hope this video helped you. I hope it was not too long, but I hope it was in-depth and gave you guys enough information to make decisions. Now, a lot of you people, and this is a thing I got on the last video, are gonna be like, I don't have any of those Pokemon. I do not have these shadows. I do not have the starters to power up these shadows. Can you make a budget version? I'm just gonna go ahead and link below the budget version of this video, breaking down the best budget Pokemon to power up, Pokemon that are very easily accessible in game. This also includes Pokemon that can be used as two different typings. And you might've noticed this Pokemon like Moltres were both good as a fire and a flying type ray attacker. So if you're looking to save some dust, be a budget trainer, you can go ahead and power up a Moltres and use it as two types. And this is an advanced strategy a lot of people use to save Stardust in which you power up one Pokemon for two types, things like Roserade, Mamoswine, etc. So definitely go ahead and check out the budget video link below and check out some of the best Pokemon to power up on a budget. And we're gonna see you in the next one. Fall for tips, buddy. Peace.